Hey, what's up everybody? This is day seven. This is our last day of this localizer baseline. So let's go ahead and head back to the shelter and talk about what we've got to do to finish this thing up. Now that all of our cable links are adjusted out at the DU on the transmit side and the monitor side, we've got our center lines established. We've been out into the far field and the near field. We phased the system. We verified our course width and clearance widths. Now we can optimize our monitor recombining unit here. So the first thing is to check all of our IF levels, our intermediate frequency levels. Um, looking at TP11, we're just setting up all these IFs for 1.5 volts. So uh, for the course center line, I have 1.5 on the course width. Uh, that's at 1.5 and I pre-adjusted all of these. And then clearance 1 and clearance 2 are again 1.5 volts peak to peak. Okay, now we're going to check our peak-to-peak -peak amplitude for the inline phase reading. And we're going to open up the transmitter cabinet, and on the back of the back plane here, we have our inline phase card. And I'm connected to uh, inline phase detect with the ground clip on the ground test point. Okay, below me is the oscilloscope that I'm looking at while I adjust this R1. 1.5 volts on dual frequency systems, which is what this is, course and clearance, dual frequency. Let's move the other way. Yeah, 1.7, 1.6, 1 1.5. With that set at 1.5, we'll have reliable inline phase readings on the maintenance data terminal. And these are just a convenience reading to show the CSB to SPO phase relationship that was established out in the far field with the portable ILS receiver. And that's our inline phase reading, 1.5. We can begin the monitor CSB to SBO phasing adjustment. And so just like the transmit CSB to SBO phasing adjustments that we did out in the far field to get the right cable lengths for between the CSB and SBO, we're going to do the same thing for the monitor returns. We're going to put the quadrature cable in line with the transmitter, and then we're going to adjust the cable lengths to read while we're in quadrature. Uh, 0 0.000 DDM on the course width. It's unlikely that we're going to be able to correct this with just the MRU SBO phase adjustment since again these are brand new cables uh, we're not going to be able to probably get it right where it needs to be without having to cut some physical cable lengths for the best uh, range available to us later on C2. Another way to think about this is Cutting the cables is kind of a rough in way to phase it initially, and then the fine tuning for the phase is given to you by the C2 adjustment in MRU. Okay, the technician behind me is adjusting the course SBO phase uh, on a C2 on the MRU, and he's walking it down from a 14 in the 150 to a 9. So keep adjusting. 7, 5, 2, 1, and that will be just fine for us. So now we're going to take the quad cable out and make sure that we're not reverse sense. I have a feeling from earlier that this looked to be reverse sense. And when I say reverse sense, I mean we're expecting to read 155 uh, DDM, but in the 150 hertz side. Uh, reverse sense would be just if we read 155 in the 90. So we took the quad cable out and we're measuring a 102 in the 90s. So we're definitely reverse sense, but we're going to turn up our with DDM pot on the MRU, make that read 155. And all right, so we're reverse sensed, not a big deal. We're just gonna cut 45 inches out of either the SBO or CSB feed line out in the DU. Okay, we're here out of the distribution unit box on the combining unit side, and we disconnected the SBO cable from the coarse SBO output of the CU. There, and this is the cable. We've got plenty of length on that we're going to cut 45 inches out of to correct the reverse sense issue. Okay, we're going to turn on our transmitters and see if that corrected the reverse sense issue. And it looks like when we cut 45 inches out, that gave us a 164 now in the 150. So we're going to put the quad cable back in and just re verify everything is good on the phasing, just make some fine tune adjustments after that rough cut. Okay, we verified phasing, it's still at 1 in the 150, almost 0. So we can take the quad cable out and set up our final width for 155. 
Next we're setting up the wide, wide alarm profile. And this is a profile that we can activate for when flight inspection requests us to put it in a wide alarm configuration. So this would be reducing the SBO for course and clearance to the monitored alarm points to ensure that at alarm, when the system would have shut down or just to the point of shutdown, it still has sufficient off course signal for the aircraft to not inadvertently start thinking that they're approaching the center line again. And that concludes the localizer baseline. We're going to spend the rest of the day soldering all of our monitor cables and transmit cables here at the DU and CU. If you found this video series helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and ring that bell to receive more notifications of other future videos. Thanks.